Hey guys, Kayla Harrison with us this time. Of course, Kayla's coming off another big win in the PFL. You're headed to the playoffs. You're the reigning PFL champion from what, 2019. I'm excited to watch you smash people in the playoffs again. <laughs> I'm excited to do it. <laughs> I say around the house, all Kayla Harrison does is smash fools and cash checks, you know, and that's pretty true. Hey man, this is, it's so far, it's been pretty accurate. I've been pretty. I've been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Of course, this year that's changed, right? You're a new mom. And you're also doing some media rounds in support of raising funds for the tragedy yeah. that happened in Miami. So now yeah. you have a lot more on your plate. I am interested to hear about that and what you think, what you want people to do as well. You know, I was in Atlantic City for my fight when it happened. Yeah. Um, my videographer, Mighty Jacks, reached out to me and told me, hey, did you see the news? And I went online and I looked it up and I was kind of just, um, you know, when something like that happens, your heart just stops. Like, yeah. and I think it gives, take it, you take a moment and you just realize, you know, how precious life is. Um, for me, I kind of had flashbacks. I know it's not quite the same, but I kind of had flashbacks to the Boston bombing, mm -hmm. uh, marathon bombing, because yeah. I lived in Boston at the time. I lived really close to where it happened. I had my best friend worked right next to where it happened. It was like pretty scary. And my heart just, you know, it weighed on my mind. I, uh, it, it felt pretty um, heavy. And what is the point of having a platform if you don't use it to do something, right? So yeah. <clears throat> after my fight, I, I decided that I was going to let everyone know that I'm going to be making a donation and urge everyone to do the same. I love that. I love that you use your platform for the things that you value because you repeatedly showed that this isn't a new thing. You've done that for a long time. Even when you were in the, when you were an Olympic athlete, two time gold medals in judo, you did that. I love that you're doing that here. Where should we tell people that they could go? Yeah. So if you, I mean, if you want to, so I'm making a donation on behalf of my foundation, the fearless foundation. Sure. Um, if you want to donate through me, um, for a certain period of time, any do I haven't decided exactly how long yet, but if you want to donate through me, you can just go to the fearlessfoundation.org, click donate, and that money that you donate is going to go right to um, the um, Surfside Hardship Fund. Yeah, I'm really grateful for the way that you use your platforms, even recent social media posts. This, this morning I was sitting outside and I was drinking my coffee, and Rachel's like, Did you see Kayla's post on Instagram? That's my wife, Rachel. And I was like, oh, yeah, I did. It was about Jesus and your relationship and your faith. And I love that. I love when people um, put themselves out there more like that, especially on things that um, matter, right? Religious yeah. views or even their post before when you talked about your mom. I thought that that yeah. is inspiring because so often I found in life that people <clears throat> don't, they just don't like to talk about certain things. Um, yeah, and for so sure. When I see somebody like you share more personal stuff. I love it. I mean, I think it's important. Um, you know, I've always posted like in judo when I would lose, I would make a post um, because I don't believe in this like glittery, um, fake social media presence. You know, like the, yeah. life is gritty, life is dirty, life is hard, life is ups and downs and highs and lows and good days and bad days and sunny days and rainy days so I I try to be to stay true to who I am but also you know I post um some fun stuff some I just post how I am like it's all organic you know yeah. <laughs> I don't know I don't know how else to be but I'm pretty excited about so my the post about my mom um she she scared me again she had to go to the hospital and just you know I really love her and I really appreciate her and um, I don't tell her enough. So I just was all in my feelings and, and needed to tell her that I love her very, very much. And I wanted everyone else to know how much I love her and give her some love, send her some love as well, some positive yeah. energy. And I also love that when you, because that, that's something that people do. I've seen that. But what I don't see is that people that are honest about like some of the harder things in life that life entails that a lot of people experience and I see that you you won't usually don't like edit stuff out in a way yeah. that makes it less real you keep it authentic and I think that that's important 
because there's so many people in the world that go through so many difficult times yeah and maybe they feel all alone do you know what i mean right right for sure i think about that all the time because i've been there i've felt like that i have felt all alone you know i have felt um like i was never going to be happy again i've been at rock bottom and Mm. i don't my goal as a human being is to help it people and to help anyone who's feeling like that you know I remember I remember when I was um when I was moving to Boston after I had um told my mom that I had been sexually abused and I was like when I say I was at rock bottom like you couldn't get any lower than I was I I didn't brush my hair I didn't get out of bed I didn't brush my teeth I didn't want to live Um, I had constant panic attacks. I was suffering from severe, severe PTSD. And I remember on the drive up, I had just had a nightmare um, and a flashback and I was like sweating and we had stopped at a gas station. And I felt so nervous that like people were looking at me or think like something was wrong with me or They could see it on my face, like that I was dirty and I was this like shameful thing. And I remember this woman smiled at me Mm. and she smiled real big. Like one of those ones that it goes all the way to your eyes, you know, like it's in their eyes. And um, she just said something like, hi, honey, how are you? Or like something very simple. And that kind of just took for that brief second took me out of that angst and that fear and that pain and that sorrow. And I laughed and I said, well, I'm, I'm okay. I guess I'm okay. (laughs) And I think about that a lot. You know, I think about how simple, what a simple thing it is just to say, just to smile at people, just to say, hold the door for someone, say, have a nice day to someone. Um, to, to share your story, to make posts online. You know, I've had, there's been plenty of hardship in my life from, from my childhood trauma to my father passing to, you know, my mom's latest husband passed. Like there's been plenty of, plenty of stuff and oh, everyone goes through things, you know, that's what, that's what makes us human. We all, um, we all have stuff we have to go through. We all have roadblocks. We all have, if you want sins, we all have you know, um, sometimes life is just shitty, you know, but we're not alone. That's the beauty of it. You're not alone. It's really a great message. And I think it's especially important now because what you described about your moment happened years ago, right? Imagine Mm -hmm. growing up today and having so much social media and seeing all these Mm -hmm. people online who apparently have all these perfect lives, right? (laughs) So you definitely stick out as someone who lives more authentically and shares um deeper things more difficult things so that people know life is hard yeah and I mean to be honest with you I'm not here to be um I'm not here to be perfect I'm not here to be um I don't know fake I'm not here for material things uh I, I feel like my purpose on this earth is, and the legacy that I leave behind is constantly evolving and growing and changing. But number one, you know, my legacy is going to be my children, um, how I raise them, how, how I love them, how I give them security. Number two, I think my legacy is going to be how I change the world. You know, I want to be a light in it. I don't ever want to be, you know, darkness but especially I don't I really don't want to be fake or like a fake light I want to be a a real I want to make a real difference in this world and you know the the MMA stuff the the wanting to be the greatest the the, that desire that passion um that is that is innate that's going to keep coming because I have the confidence. I have the belief. I do everything right. I work hard. I don't skip get steps. I know that's going to come. And with that growth is going to come more opportunity to give, you know, and to do greater and to, to have a bigger impact. So that's, that's kind of how I think about it anyways. Well, it's awesome. I'm glad, like I said, I'm grateful, truly grateful to share it this morning. I was thinking, I was talking to Jesus and I was like, 
what am I supposed to learn from Kayla? Because I mean, I feel like, you know, I feel like he's got stuff for me to learn. And so I'm grateful whenever he brings stuff like that to me. You know what, to be honest with you, that was a big step for me, you know, making that Instagram post, not because I'm ashamed or, yeah. um, I had just kind of always, I always kept it to my, I was always very private with my faith. It was something that I didn't really feel the need to share with people because it was, it was, I guess it's also my safe place, right? Like it's, I've always, I've always had Jesus. Jesus has always had my back and my worst times in the, in the absolute bottom, you know, what would I do? I would pray. Actually, I would journal. And when I would journal, I would write to God, you know, I would say, dear God. Oh, and then, I mean, since I was eight years old, I've been doing that. That's what, how all my journal entries are. Wow. Um, they're my prayers. And I've done that through the good times and the bad. And I never had, it had never really occurred to me that I should share it, but I started going to this new church with the kids. And obviously having them in my life, you know, it's important to me, not that they, they don't have to follow in my footsteps. They can make their, they're going to make their own choices. I, you know, I'm, and I'm okay with that. I'll love them regardless of what, whatever they decide to do, whoever they decide to be. But I just want to give them the best chance at happiness and love and this eternal love that can't be broken and you can't do anything to mess it up and like I I want them to have that so we we I decided that why I should be public with it like why wouldn't I why wouldn't I share the good news like this is this is who I am and this is what I believe and hopefully more people believe it too maybe because of me saying that you know yeah or at least feel I don't know, give, have the opportunity to consider. Yeah. yeah. Um, or just feel like whatever your religion, whatever your faith, whatever your thoughts, like you should never be afraid to right. be who you are. Yeah. That's my, that's my opinion. That is, let's see, I think like I asked Jesus earlier and you told me what it is. Exactly. Exactly what you said. <laughs> that is what I'm to learn from <laughs> Kayla Harrison. Um, and I'm grateful for that. I sometimes struggle. Yeah. Thank you. We have good talks. Yeah, I know. I mean, I had no plans to, I did plan to express gratitude for that because I truly, (laughs) I see that I like to express gratitude, but I didn't plan on talking about Jesus for so long. (laughs) But hey, you know, I love Jesus and I was glad that to see that. And my wife was too, like seriously, that legitimately happened. I was drinking my coffee and she came out and was like, did you see Kayla? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So you're already having the impact that maybe you thought you might. (laughs) Good. That makes me happy. To get back to your fighting life, <laughs> which okay. I love. Love watching you smash people, right? PFL playoffs. Your fight's on August 17th. August 19th. I'm excited you're fighting okay. Jenna, Jenna Fabian. Just a sec, hang on. Okay. I'm thinking that these are, this is why you can't have headphones when you have cauliflower ear, because they never stay in. <laughs> those things don't ever stay in anyway, those little ones. Yeah. I got the I don't know. Ear, you know what I mean? I look like Smart. a psychopath out in my. I have those too, but I didn't want to do them for the interview. Okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I fight August nineteenth. Yeah. What else do you want to know? Jenna Fabian, she's a grap. I mean, she's a striker, striker. A grappler. That's a classic matchup. People love that. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting too because it's south call, south call. You know, she's looking really sharp. She's had some some good wins this season. We were actually supposed to fight in the semis of the 2019 tournament but she uh didn't I don't know she got sick something happened she didn't make weight I'm not exactly sure what happened but um so I've been preparing for this match for a while I'm excited for it yeah it's exciting and the other half the bracket is Larissa Pacheco and Taylor Guardardo Larissa's been actually since she lost you last year she's been in the gym just like thinking about you getting swole what do you think about I know I love that story it's like a movie you know I, mean? I know it is but uh everyone thinks that i'm goliath but i, I always picture myself as david so <laughs> that's <laughs> it doesn't like, matter how, it doesn't matter how hard she works i work harder i promise you that that's probably the the best attitude to have in someone in your position 
<laughs> yeah, I'm always the dog in the fight, in my opinion. And this season, you're actually the number two seed, which I don't understand. To me, I mean, I don't want to. Here's my thing. I'm just going to throw it at you. I don't understand why pretty much everything is even. Why doesn't the reigning champion get the, why doesn't that count? I have no idea. I don't make the rules, clearly. We we know this by now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't make the rules. Something about time or something. She finished her fight quicker, so. Yeah, I love the format, through. so I hate to, to crack on it. No, I agree, I'm I agree. Like, I like the format. Sometimes I'm like, like trying to figure out the math and like. Yeah, I know. Down and this no, you have down. to be like Einstein to figure out <laughs> who gets what seed. <laughs> then as a writer, I'm like, she's the champ. She's the reigning champ. You know what I mean? Like, but it's, they don't. Yeah. But are you? I mean, you are, right? But the way that they do yeah. the seasons. Do you see right, right, like, right, you right. Carry the belt in with you. No, I don't, I don't need to. Right. It, your belt needs part of your being. <laughs> your yeah, that's it. Right? <laughs> I just have that that presence, that aura. You really do. I love your <laughs> your, your thick mic skills are tearing up the world. Oh my goodness, thank I, you. I love it. I asked you about it at the press conference, but here's what I was thinking about it after the press conference. I was like, you know what? Because what Kelsey does, and I talk to people a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Practice stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'll be driving in the car, and I'll think of like even like today, I was like, well, how will I talk to her? How will I talk to Kayla? Like, what will I say or whatever? So I was wondering, like, do you? <laughs> Your sick promos are you are those some things that like are you in front of the mirror thinking about no, that or is it just no. like how does that come no. out of you just right there? No. I don't understand it. It just brews in my head, you know. I kind of start thinking about it before the fight, and it gets me a little bit worked up to think yeah. about it and to like you know, and maybe I'll like make a couple notes or like think about it, think about how I feel, think about what you know what it, what I want to express. And then I just let her rip. I trust my emotions. I trust my gut. You can see when people like are faking it. A good example would be Conor McGregor before it seems like oh he's my not goodness, being authentic, right? right? It was oh like my goodness. icky like right. bad, I think. Terrible. No, it was terrible. It was hard to watch. Yeah, yeah. And, and part of it, I mean, obviously part of it is the ridiculous and like obscene things that he was saying and doing. But then another big part of it is that like, this is just an act, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, I think that when you have, you know, I, I know everyone says like, oh, he has oh, so much money, he has this, he has that, he has fame, he's, he's, he's literally a worldwide celebrity, um, you know, he can't leave a restaurant in Vegas, which is yeah. pretty wild, it is, it's yeah. never happened before in our sport, he's transcended this sport, um, but in my opinion, he has fallen, he has fallen, um, yeah. and I think that that's a scary feeling and when that happens you cling to you try and re you try and go back and see how you were successful what did you do and then you yeah. try and you you try and just duplicate that and it's not possible you know like you yeah. can't duplicate you you being conor mcgregor and really believing that you're the champ champ and you're gonna apologize to absolutely you know effing nobody like you can't duplicate that yeah. that is a real honest to god energy feeling belief and it made him super successful but if you don't put in the work and you don't do the things that are going to give you the belief in yourself then all that other stuff just comes off as phony because like it's not there yeah i feel like the things you should have duplicated was all the training at the gym and all the fights yeah. and the UFC <laughs> yeah. that he had, right? like duplicate duplicate that young hungry baroque on welfare conor mcgregor you know like i don't want to get all like but like let's get some eye of the tiger back in here you know like let's go like let's go train in the mountains or train in isolation and like not have yes men around you and but maybe she's happy like this maybe this is maybe he doesn't want that anymore you know and that's okay too that's totally okay but, but just say that you know just be honest with yourself you know, know when it's time for you to, to walk away. You don't have the fire anymore. But don't pretend to be this guy that you once were if you're not going to put in the effort for it. Like, keep yeah. it real, you know? Now keep it real. Like, also, don't threaten to kill wives and, you know. No, 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 no. Children. To me, that's, no. No, that is like, I would never, I don't know how Dustin, Dustin is like a true uh, gentleman. A and he's so good for this sport because there's no way in hell 
if someone said that about my family, I would like, you, you think I'm crazy inside of a cage. Like you, I can't even, I would, don't say that about people. Like you just don't do that. Don't do it. And you did it while you're laying there with the bro, the Dustin broke your leg. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? I was like, that what is, is so this, bad. man? It was so bad. It so, was really, yeah. Oh my gosh. That was hard to watch. I was like, Jesus. Connor, but I couldn't believe they interviewed him, but it just goes to show how much they love him and how I was like, I don't remember them interviewing Anderson Silva. I don't remember them interviewing Chris Weidman. I, you know, like it just goes to show how much they love him and, and how much money he makes them and how willing they are to like, they, they are just like, it's the Connor show, you know, it's the Connor show. I saw your manager tweeted out last week that he said you could submit Connor in one round, I think. <laughs> I know that's um what a story. Ali really Ali likes to like stir the pot and he just I he makes me want to turn off my social media because then all of these trolls just start yeah. attacking me. <laughs> they like, come after just, you like, oh my god I couldn't believe all the hate I got like I was Aww. like Jesus I didn't even say it like Aww. I didn't say it <laughs> yeah and you didn't even like respond or anything I saw you didn't respond I did not touch that one I was like Ali <laughs> stop it um yeah no like i was being cursed and called a yeah terrible terrible name but whatever i don't care but how soon would you go go for that leg though (laughs) (laughs) it's terrible it is terrible probably pretty pretty soon pretty fast i mean i think that's like the surest method of victory um well gosh i sure enjoy talking to you um yes me too grateful for it and thanks for talking to me about jesus all this you know oh it's my pleasure accidentally we'll surely get your story out about um getting people to help contribute yes that horrible thing do. happened and yes, we're super do. excited to watch you go wreck people again definitely believe in you and can't <laughs> wait to see you fight last question for you are you gonna stay in the pfl next year <laughs> <laughs> you know i have they are in you know ali is talking to them right now they're in negotiations about to be quite honest i have things that i want to accomplish and I don't know if I can do that in the PFL, but if the PFL wants to compensate me and make, make their best effort to help make those things happen, then maybe we can come to an agreement. I hope so. But right now I just got to focus on smashing people's faces in. Well, you're certainly great at that. Again, I'm the great. rest will work itself out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I also love um, the idea of a big pile of money for you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks again. I'm so super grateful. Thanks, Kelsey, so much. Tell your wife I said hi. Okay, and, I will. Um, I hope everyone's well, okay? Okay, thanks. Bye. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.